What's up guys, before we get started here, I just want to point everyone in the direction of the KRW Network. On that channel, we're going to be talking about literally anything, not just Saw content, American Horror Story, and everything else that I cover on this channel, but literally going through the gauntlet doing lists, theories, speculations, pitches, and just everything else every Monday and Thursday, as well as other discussion videos and maybe more content as that channel grows. We're very excited for it, so I hope everybody will go and share share their love and support you can find the link in the description section below go subscribe and share that channel out because we're very excited for it anyway with that being said here's the video okay guys and girls i have a pretty interesting theory about spiral and the future of the Saul franchise but before we get into it i just want to say that i've been covering the Saul franchise for a long time and in that time i've discussed news speculation the series as a retrospective, and even my fair share of fan theories. Recently, I found myself more and more excited to see this film. And you know, no matter what I might have said in the past, I am still a very big fan of this series, and I do guess that absence does make the heart grow fonder. I want to know the plot. I want to know how it connects to the world established in the first eight films. And probably just because of that, I've gotten my fair share of comments from the people who watch saying that the one one thing the Saw franchise needs to do is bring back Hoffman for any future sequels. There was a lot of people who felt like he needed to be in Jigsaw in some way and now a lot of people are even speculating and heavy rumors are that he might show up sometime in Spiral. Now unfortunately we're going to have to wait to see if that's the case. I mean by this time if everything was normal we probably would have already had an answer to that question, and we would be taking time to talk about that film, its merits, and maybe even what a future sequel could be like. But alas, because times are exactly what they are, now we have an entire year to speculate on Spiral as well as the future of the franchise. So when the subject comes up about any legacy characters coming back for any future sequels, be it Costas Mandalore, Shawnee Smith, or even Tobin Bell himself, I can kind of understand where the fan base is coming from. You know, just to be clear, the Saul franchise has never been shy to give us a blink and you'll miss it cameo from somebody in a trap or maybe even just a reporter who hasn't showed up for at least two or three movies. But really when we're talking about Hoffman's character, I just have to say, I've never really wanted him to come back. And that's really not because I don't like his character or even I think he's played out as a character. I even did an entire video about Hoffman ended up saving the Saul franchise after Saul 3 left it literally nowhere else to go. His rising prominence in the story was the epitome of what John was looking for, but also the monster that John was ultimately creating in Amanda. And getting a chance to explore his character in Saul 5 and 6 was something pretty spectacular to watch, and I'd even argue that seeing his kind of descent into madness from Saul 3D is pretty much the only highlight from that film. Anyway, with all that being said, I'm sure you're asking yourself already, how does fan demand for the return of Costas Mandalore as Mark Hoffman somehow play into the notion that Spiral from the Book of Saul is setting up some kind of an extended universe in this horror franchise? Well, in order to get into that, we are going to have to talk about a theory as to why Hoffman is definitely in this film. First, we know that while it doesn't seem to be entirely hinged on the narrative of the previous films, Spiral is definitely set within the same world. This has been confirmed on many occasions from the writers, the director, and even the producers. The film synopsis would even seem to indicate that the events of the series are still canon to the upcoming film, as it reads, Working in the shadows of an esteemed police veteran, brash detective Ezekiel Zeke Banks and his rookie partner William Shink take charge of a grisly investigation into murders that are eerily reminiscent of the city's gruesome past. Unwittingly trapped in a deepening mystery, Zeke finds himself at the center of the killer's morbid game. So at this point, all of us know that. However, the thing that I'm most interested in in that synopsis is the very beginning. Working in the shadows of an esteemed police veteran, Samuel L. Jackson. And that in and of itself really isn't anything new. We've seen in the trailer that both men are police officers, and we've long since known that Chris Rock would be playing Samuel L. Jackson's son. Yet, when going back into the footage that was seen in the trailer, one of the things that continues to stick out to me is the deliberate use of the tenting throughout the film. Pretty much every single time we see Chris Rock's character, 
there is at least a noticeable orange tint on the screen, while Samuel L. Jackson's Marcus is shown throughout with a distinct blue, or maybe even a little bit of red. Now, this could simply just be showing the difference between times of day, or even just setting the mood for various locations throughout the film, but what if it's a subtle hint that the movie will at some point, probably near the beginning, deal with some kind of past events before jumping into the present day? And maybe those past events, as seen at the beginning of the film, is the fallout of Hoffman's assault on the police headquarters and the discovery of the bathroom after the events of Saw 3D. I mean, if we're being honest, jumping around in time is just nothing new in the Saw franchise, and showcasing a moment as big as that would go a long way in building up Marcus's esteemed history with the police department, while simultaneously offering up a chance to see a cameo from a legacy character in Mark Hoffman. Then perhaps if Hoffman is introduced somewhere in the early parts of the film, the characters can go back to him in order to gain information on John's legacy, which could potentially set up a Tobin Bell flashback at some point during the movie, or at least help this film build on the continuity of the previous eight films. Another reason it is likely to assume that Hoffman could be in this movie is based on some of the promotional stills that we've gotten from the film. One of which shows Chris Rock's Zeke standing next to a bulletin board that we can clearly see indicates imagery from the Saw 2 house. And fans of the series will know that the Saw 2 house was later converted into a livable space, which many suspect is where Hoffman was living at the time. It is also directly connected to the bathroom in which Hoffman was left. So really, any indication that the police 100% found the Saw 2 house after the events of the original seven films means that they definitely found the bathroom. Plus, Saw 5 made it inescapably clear that Hoffman was the only one supplying John with the necessary police information, which by using Hoffman in this movie could be a very interesting way to wrap in this new killer who's specifically targeting police officers. Seriously, if he is still alive, Hoffman would definitely be the person to talk to during the events of this film, and as a longtime fan, it would be incredibly gratifying to see him return in some way, shape, or form. Finally, even though it's never really 100% accurate, it is worth noting that Costas Mandalore has routinely come up in the casting list on Google searches for Spiral over the last couple of weeks. Now, they've changed that since then, and he no longer shows up, but it is interesting all the same, especially when Hoban Bell never really showed up on those listings as soon as we knew that this movie was going to be what it was. But of course, as things are, now that I've said all of this aloud on a video, we know it won't happen, so I guess don't get your hopes up, but it would be really cool. Okay, now with all of that being said, and all the reasons why Hoffman might show up in this film, let me explain how his reintroduction could be a fantastic way to set up a universe worth of content. And in order to do that, I have to direct you to one of my recent real takes. Meanwhile, at the KRW Network. That even over a decade after his death, in the Saul universe, John Jigsaw Kramer is still remembered and people are still trying to emulate his message. So in some way, John has truly become immortal, because he lived a life worth remembering. But that legacy, as we discussed last time, is diluted by the fact that nobody in this entire universe is John Kramer. You see, that's what I really hope this whole From the Book of Saul subtitle is really trying to say. If this film has to exist in the same continuity as the original eight films, when it does seem like it's more and more likely that the person behind the carnage isn't directly connected to John Kramer and with seemingly little if any legitimate connection to the other films outside of maybe a similar aesthetic, the possibility of a familiar set piece, or maybe a surprise cameo, if this subtitle is just a nod to fans that the future of the series will consist of largely independent stories, each of which detailing another chapter that aims to flesh out the world established in the original seven films, while also exploring the implication of John's legacy in the general public, I would be really f***ing excited. Imagine if Jigsaw was retroactively made into the first in a long line of potential sequels that aim to explore the lasting impact of John's legacy as we explore the actions of past apprentices, 
delusional fans, and maybe even demented copycats. Not just in the upcoming film, but maybe that television show idea that was floating around for a minute there. And if we're talking about the stories that could be told with this format, the possibilities are literally endless. Not only in the foreseeable future can we go back and explore what Logan and Eleanor are doing, but you can make an entire story revolving around the whole Jigsaw Rules website. A setting for one of the stories that I would absolutely love to see in the future is that of a courtroom. I mean, hell, they almost did something like that with the Nightmare on Elm Street franchise, and the concept surrounding that series doesn't lend itself as effortlessly as something like Saw. You see, if Hoffman is reintroduced in Spiral, especially if it isn't treated as a main character the rest of the story, then his criminal trial could be a perfect set piece for the Saw TV show that was kind of in talks, or at least rumored, a couple of months ago. For those of you who didn't see the news, there was a fairly widespread rumor floating around for the last few months saying that the Saw franchise was looking to extend its reach onto the small screen in the wake of Spiral's retooling of the franchise. While on that same note, Tobin Bell has expressed his interest in continuing to play his most iconic role in John Jigsaw Kramer, even though he's recently said that he thinks the character could be passed to another actor. As long as he's able to keep doing it, I'm sure he would be very interested. And furthermore, Josh Stolberg, one of the writers of the last two films, has ensured fans that he strongly believes that the story set up in Jigsaw will eventually play itself out in one form or another. So let me paint y'all some fun picture about the future of the franchise, one that of course should be taken with a very big grain of salt. But what if, as we've discussed, Spiral starts in the past to give Hoffman a cameo appearance before jumping into the present day? This would help to establish its connection to the greater series, but just boldly declare that the rest of the film is going to be its own thing. Then, if the film does well, Lionsgate can continue to straight up sequelize Spiral and continue that story in some kind of anthology series, or maybe just continuing with the mysteries that that film sets up. However, with having Hoffman come back and being alive in present day, it would allow the series creators to give themselves a little bit of wiggle room in order to develop maybe a special event miniseries primarily set during the events of Hoffman's criminal trial. Because if you ask me, I feel like one of the best things you can do with that setting is just tell a long-form narrative. Criminal trials are just long stories either way as we're trying to convince the jury that these events happened and here's all the evidence and it just plays through in that way. And just jumping off that, the concept of displaying evidence to a jury and detailing the events of one trap to another as the viewer watches it play out on the screen in some kind of flashback would be a great way to go back in time and shore up a whole lot of plot holes that were created with Jigsaw and the later sequels. And this would also allow the series to go back in a time when John, Amanda, Logan, and everybody else in the franchise was still alive and well, and we can take more time to explore their characters, their relationships, and how certain things came to be. And I think most important of all, one of the things you can do with that setup is finally find a different way to tell the story where you can go back in time and show John's relationship with Logan. And you can finally show what Logan was doing during the events of the previous seven films. Or you can even have Hoffman and Amanda know about Logan and how they deal with them. And I have it on pretty good authority that they did know them, especially with the people who were creating these characters and wanted to tell stories with them in the future. So I think that there is material there. Anyway, that's just really the point. There does seem to be a lot of great opportunities with this franchise going forward, and I think a lot of it starts with having Hoffman just simply be alive in the present day. For me, it would shake up the formula. It would allow the series to continue on with future sequels, but also go to the small screen and maybe branch out in books and novels and comic books and whatever. That would be really interesting, and I feel like it would be a great way to grow the franchise. But this is just me talking about it as a super fan. I want to hear what you guys have to say in the comment section below. Hope everyone is having a fantastic day. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Hit that bell over by the subscriber button to notify you every single time I upload. It's been real.